Hi students, welcome to Bosco Campus Vision. Today's lecture deals with the classification and description of consonants. Consonants include all voiceless sounds and those voiced sounds produced by means of an obstruction in the mouth or by a narrowing of the air passage giving rise to a frictional noise. That is, during the production of this consonants, the air from the lungs does not escape freely and continuously. There is some kind of obstruction in the mouth or a narrowing of the air passage. So, the air from the lungs escapes with a frictional noise. To describe a consonant fully, we have to know certain factors about its articulation. These are the airstream mechanism. The state of the glottis, the position of the soft palate, the articulating organs or points of articulation and the manner of articulation or the stricture involved. The airstream mechanism. Airstream means a moving current of air. The way in which an airstream works is called an airstream mechanism. All English sounds are produced with a pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism. That is, the air that we breathe out or airstream expelled from lungs is modified to form this speech sounds. The state of the glottis. By the expression, the state of the glottis, we mean the different positions the vocal cords taken when we speak. Speech sounds are divided into two kinds, voiceless and voiced, according to two different states of the glottis. The sounds produced with the glottis open are called voiceless sounds and those produced with the glottis closed are voiced sounds. According to the position of the soft palate, the sounds may be nasal or oral. During the articulation of oral sounds, the soft palate is raised so that it touches the back wall of the pharynx and the nasal passage is closed and the air escapes only through the mouth. During the production of nasal sounds, the soft palate is lowered so that the nasal passage is opened and the oral passage is blocked at some point and the air escapes only through the nose. Consonants thus include both voiced and voiceless sounds, oral and nasal sounds. Again, consonants can be described on the basis of articulating organs or points or places of articulation. Based on the articulating organs or points or places of articulation, consonants can be classified as follows. Labial in the production of labial sounds, the lips are involved. These may be subdivided into bilabial and labiodental. Bilabial sounds are those sounds in the production of which both the lips are involved. P, B, W and M are the bilabial sounds in English. The active articulator is the lower lip and the passive articulator is the upper lip. What about this active and passive articulators? As we have discussed in the previous class, active articulators are organs of speech that move during the production of speech sounds. But when it comes to passive articulators, passive articulators do not move during the production of speech sounds. So, in the production of bilabial sounds, Lower lip is the active articulator and the upper lip is the passive articulator. Labiodental. These sounds are produced with the upper row of teeth against the lower lip. The lower lip is the active articulator and the upper row of teeth is the passive articulator. There are two labiodental sounds in English. They are F as in fish and V as in van. Dental. The tip of the tongue is the active articulator and the upper row of teeth is the passive articulator. The sounds 
produced with the tip of the tongue against the upper row of teeth are called dental. The sounds T and D as in the words thin and then are the two dental sounds that occur in English. In the production of alveolar sound, the tip or the blade of the tongue and the teeth ridge also called the alveolar ridge are involved. The active articulator is the tip or blade of the tongue and the passive articulator is the teeth ridge. The sounds T, D, N, L, S and Z are the alveolar sounds that occur in English. Post alveolar The tip or the blade of the tongue is the active articulator and the back part of the alveolar ridge, that is, the part of the roof of the mouth that lies immediately after the teeth ridge, is the passive articulator. The first consonant in the English words write and record is an example of a post alveolar sound. Palato alveolar. The blade of the tongue and the friend of the tongue are the active articulators. And the teeth ridge and the hard palate are the passive articulators. In English, the sounds ch as in child, j as in jam, sh as in ship, and r as in vision are the four palato alveolar sounds. Palatal The friend of the tongue is raised towards the hard palate. The active articulator is the friend of the tongue and the passive articulator is the hard palate. The sound that begins the English word S is the one palatal consonant sound that occurs in English. Velar In the production of velar sounds, the back of the tongue is raised towards the soft palate, also called velum. The back of the tongue is the active articulator and the soft palate is the passive articulator. The sounds k as in kite, g as in go and ng as in king are the three vela sounds in English. Glottal Glottal sounds are produced in the glottis. The two occult cords are the articulators involved, both active. The sound H as in the word hat is the one glottal sound that occurs in English. Uvular The extreme back of the tongue is the active articulator and the uvula is the passive articulator. There are no examples of uvula consonants in English. Retroflex sounds Certain sounds are produced by curling of the tip of the tongue and raising it against the roof of the mouth. Such sounds are called retroflex sounds. There is no retroflex sound in English RP. Malayalam has retroflex consonants such as na as in panam, mani. Again, consonants can be classified on the basis of the manner of articulation or the structure involved which we will discuss in detail in the next session. Here is the question for you. Please do answer the question. Thank you so much for paying attention.